Station and the Urimaskin uranium machine, i.e., the nuclear reactor. It was in effect broken up between institutes where the different directors dominated the research and set their own research agent as dot. 11, 21, 22. The dominant personnel, facilities, and areas of research were Sag Smiley 23, 24, 25. Ward the fourth director of the Institute for Physique, Institute for Physics, at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Medicine East for Child, Quint, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Medical Research after 1948, the Max Planck Institute for Medicine East for Child, in Heidelberg. Measurement of nuclear constants. Six physicists. Klaus Clusius, director of the Institute for Physical Chemistry at the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich Isotope Separation and Heavy Water Production. CA. Four physical chemists and physicists. Kurt Diebner, director of the HWA Versuchstel, testing station, in Gotho and of the RF Experimental Station in Stadtum, Thuringia. He was also an advisor to the HWA on nuclear physics. Measurement of nuclear constants. CA. Six physicists. Otto Hahn, director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemie, Quick. Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry. After World War II, the Max Planck Institute for Chemie, Otto Hahn Institute, in Berlin, Darling. Transuranic elements, fission products isotope separation, and measurement of nuclear constants. CA. Six chemists and physicists. Paul Hartek, director of the physical chemistry department of the University of Hamburg. Heavy water production and isotope production. Five physical chemists, physicists, and chemists. Werner Heisenberg, director of the Department of Theoretical Physics at the University of Leipzig until summer 1942, thereafter acting director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physik, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physics, in Berlin Dahlen. Urine masking, isotope separation, and measurement of nuclear constants. CA. Seven physicists and physical chemists. Hans Koch-Furman, director of the Second Experimental Physics Institute at the George August University of Göttingen. Isotope separation. Two physicists. Nikolaus Real, scientific director of the Ulrich uranium production. CA. Three physicists and physical chemists. George Stetter, director of the two. Physikalistries Institute. Second Physics Institute, at the University of Vienna. Transuranic elements and measurement of nuclear constants. CA. Six physicists and physical chemists. The point in 1942 when the army relinquished control of the project was its zenith in terms of the number of personnel devoted to the effort, and this was no more than about 70 scientists with about four tie devoting more than half their time to nuclear fission research. After this the number diminished dramatically and many of those not working with the main institutes stopped working on nuclear fission and devoted their efforts to more pressing war-related work. 26. On the 4th of June, 1942, a conference regarding the project, initiated by Albert Speer as head of the Reich Ministry for Armament and Ammunition, RMBM, Reichsministerium für Bewaffnung und Munition. After late 1943, the Reich Ministry for Armament and War Production decided on its continuation merely for the aim of energy production. 27. On the 9th of June, 1942, Adolf Hitler issued a decree for the reorganization of the RFR as a separate legal entity under the RMBM. The decree appointed Reich Marshal Hermann Boring as its president. 28. The reorganization was done under the initiative of Minister Albert Speer of the RMBM. It was necessary as the RFR under Bernhard Rust, the Minister of Science, Education and National Culture, was ineffective and was not achieving its purpose. 29. The hope was that Goring would 
manage the RF with the same discipline and efficiency as he had the aviation sector. A meeting was held on the 6th of July 1942 to discuss the function of the RFR and set its agenda. The meeting was a turning point in Nazi attitudes towards science as well as recognition that the policies which drove Jewish scientists out of Germany were a mistake, as the weak needed their expertise. Abraham Esau was appointed on the 8th of December, 1942 as Hermann Göring's Bevel plenipotentiary, for nuclear physics research under the RFR. In December 1943, Esau was replaced by Walter Jelak. In the final analysis, placing the RFR under Goering's administrative control had little effect on the German nuclear weapon project. 30, 31, 32, 33, Speer states that the project to develop the atom bomb was scuttled in the autumn of 1942. Though the scientific solution was there, it would have taken all of Germany's production resources to produce a bomb and then no sooner than 1947.34, development did continue with a uranium motor for the Navy and development of the German cyclotron. However, by the summer of 1943, Speer released the remaining 1,200 metric tons of uranium stock for the production of solid core ammunition. 34. Over time, the HWA and then the RFR controlled the German nuclear weapon project. The most influential people were Kurt Diagner, Abraham Esau, Walter Jelak, and Eric Schumann. Schumann was one of the most powerful and influential physicists in Germany. He was director of the physics department too at Frederick William University, later, University of Berlin which was commissioned and funded by the Oberkommando des Heers, OKH, Army High Command, to conduct physics research projects. He was also head of the research department of the HWA, assistant secretary of the science department of the OKW, and Bevel Maktikta, plenipotentiary, for high explosives. Diagna, throughout the life of the nuclear weapon project, had more control over nuclear fission research than did Walter Boff, Klaus Clusius, Otto Hahn, Paul Hartek, or Werner Heisenberg. 35, 36, Isotope Separation. Paul Peter Ewald, a member of the Uren Grin, had proposed an electromagnetic isotope separator, which was thought applicable to 235U production and enrichment. This was picked up by Manfred von Arden who ran a private research establishment. In 1928, von Arden had come into his inheritance with full control as to how it could be spent, and he established his private research laboratory the Vorchunks Laboratorium für Elektron und Physik, 37, in berlin Leichterfeld, to conduct his own research on radio and television technology and electron microscopy. He financed the laboratory with income he received from his inventions and from contracts with other concerns. For example, his research on nuclear physics and high-frequency technology was financed by the Rijkspostministerium, RPM, Rijk Postal Ministry, headed by Wilhelm Mönesorge. Von Arden attracted top-notch personnel to work in his facility, such as the nuclear physicist Fritz Hutemans. In 1940, von Arden had also conducted research on isotope separation. 38, 39, taking Ewald's suggestion heavier than building a prototype for the RPM. The work was hampered by war shortages and ultimately ended by the war. 40, aside from the Joren Brin and von Arden's team in Berlin Leichterfeld, there was also a small research team in the Henskorf Lugzug work the study group under the direction of Professor Dr. Ing. Herbert Wagner, 1900-1982, searched for alternative sources of energy for airplanes and became interested in nuclear energy in 1940. In August, 1941, they finished a detailed internal survey of the history and potential of technical nuclear physics and its applications, 
Uber Sig to Dust and Der Historis Gilent with Lung Der Modern in Technis Chin Kern Physique Ruth Long Wind and Small Bridge Keith Sorizusum in Fasung Igeni RB at Ciel and Plain. Signed by Herbert Wagner and Hugo Wopslawick. 1912-1995 in Berlin. Their application to the Aviation Ministry, RLM, to found and fund an Institute for Nuclear Technology and Nuclear Chemistry, Rieks Instituts für Kerntechnik und Kernchemie, failed. But Wopslawick continued to equal potential applications of nuclear energy and wrote a detailed textbook on technical nuclear physics. It includes one of the most detailed presentations of contemporary German knowledge about the various processes of isotope separation and recommends their combined usage to get to sufficient amounts of enriched uranium. Walter Jellack refused to print this textbook but it is preserved as a typed manuscript and it appeared after the war in 1948 virtually unchanged, with just a few additions from the U.S. atomic bomb. Released in 1945.41, in October 1944, Hugo Watsonwick wrote an article on the potential usage of nuclear energy and its many potential applications. In his view, to follow up this route of research and development was the new pathway to becoming the master of the world. 42. It is thus a mistake to focus only on thefts of the Jor and Green. Other research groups in Germany were also active in research to exploit nuclear energy, especially for military purposes. Moderator production. The production of heavy water was already underway in Norway when the Germans invaded on 9 April 1940. The Norwegian production facilities for heavy water were quickly secured, though some heavy water had already been removed and improved by the Germans. The Allies and Norwegians had sabotaged Norwegian heavy water production and destroyed stocks of heavy water by 1943. Graphite, carbon, as an alternative was not considered because the neutron absorption coefficient value for carbon calculated by Walter Bob was too high probably due to the boring in the graphite pieces having I neutron absorption. 43. Exploitation and denial strategies. Near the end of World War II, the principal Allied war powers each made plans for exploitation of German ships. In light of the implications of nuclear weapons, German nuclear fission and related technologies were singled out for special attention. In addition to exploitation, Denial of these technologies, their personnel, and related materials to rival allies was a driving force of their efforts. This typically meant getting to these resources first, which to some extent put the Soviets at a disadvantage in some geographic locations easily reached by the Western allies, even if the area was destined to be in the Soviet zone of occupation by the Potsdam Conference. At times, all parties were heavy-handed in their pursuit and denial to others. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. The best-known U.S. denial and exploitation effort was Operation Paperclip, a broad dragnet that encompassed a wide range of advanced fields, including jet and rocket propulsion, nuclear physics, and other developments with military applications such as infrared technology. Operations directed specifically towards German nuclear fission were Operation Olsos and Operation Epsilon, the latter being done in collaboration with the British. In the view of the code name for the Soviet operation, it is referred to by the historian Oinikov as the Russian Olsos.49, American and British. Berlin had been a location of many German scientific research facilities. To limit casualties and loss of equipment, many of these facilities were dispersed to other locations in the later years of the war. Operation Big. Unfortunately for the Soviets, the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physique, Quip, Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physics, had mostly been moved in 1943 and 1944 to Hikingen and its neighboring town of Hagelok on the edge of the Black Forest which eventually became the French occupation zone. 
This move allowed Americans to take into custody a large number of German scientists associated with nuclear research. The only section of the institute which remained in Berlin was the low temperature physics section, headed by Ludwig de Weilerke, who was in charge of the experimental uranium pile. 50, 51. American also teams carrying out Operation Big Race through Baden-Württemberg near the war's end in 1945, uncovering, collecting, and selectively